Hey everyone, welcome to the third part of our virtual coding activity of Spurs Give. In this activity, we'll be going over adventure modes, which branches off of our completed program from the last two activities. If you have not completed the last two activities, please do so before continuing on with this video. Now, in the last two activities, we went over how to code your basketball and how to code a player to make a working rebound game. So every time you make a rebound, your score increases. Now this game is fine, and this game works. But what we can always do is add more to it. You know, there's never, there's never not enough when it comes to making video games. And so what we can do is go on an adventure, adventure mode. We can add our own flair to the game, create things that we want to add to the game, make design changes, do whatever we want. That's the whole point of the adventure mode. The adventure mode is to go beyond just being done and putting more to make it yours. You know, make it your own creative masterpiece. Now, for our first adventure mode, because we'll be going over three in this video, our first adventure mode is to be to change the design of our first sprite, of our player sprite, Max. So, uh, as she is design, designed now, it's a generic basketball player, but I've made a few design changes that I think make her look like a superstar. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I decked her out in some Spurs attire. Now, to do this requires no extra code at all. And we don't need to edit anything else, nothing needs to be changed, nothing needs to be added. All we need to do is select our sprite and go to the costumes editor. And here you can see that our sprite now, compared to our original sprite, is a bit different. For starters, I put her in Spurs gear. Now this, uh, all in all, it's some simple design changes. And I changed the color of her clothing to make it more uh, black, white, and silver. And also I added my own logo. And by my own logo, I mean this is the Spurs logo. But trying to find it in the Scratch library is impossible because it's not there. This logo I made by hand using the tools given to me by Scratch. And there's a number of tools from a simple paintbrush to a line editor. Make some generic shapes and circles. You can use a bucket to change colors. I see it's set to purple. Let's try setting it to green. Boom. It's green, green, green. And then there's even a text editor. <laughs> and since we don't need any of this, we can use the eraser. Oh, actually that's a text editor. It works a bit different. Just delete that, and we're good to go. Use eraser, get everything. Ah, man, I erased a little too much. But luckily, there's an undo button. So for mistakes like that, you can always hit the undo button. Okay, there we go. So yeah. So if we want to change the color of our player's appearance or of her jersey, let's start with a simple basic max sprite costume. So not only can we change the color, we can actually move parts of our sprite around. So let's say I want to have my sprite's arms you know, spread out wide. You know. Like she's ready to block someone. Well, 
We can do just that. Just gotta select the arm. Boom. Now she's ready to defend. But we sort of already have a sprite that has her arms up, like she's ready to defend, so I'm just gonna move her arms back down for now. There you go. And you know, these two sprites are still a little bit different, so maybe I'll just use the redo. So arms back. And on second thought, I'll use the undo to put the arms back originally. So you can use redo and undo to fix any mistakes, or if you have any doubts or second thoughts, you can always put it back. Now onto the colors, I see I have the arm selected, so maybe I want to change her wristband. Change the color of her wristband. So they're being green, maybe black and white. So if we try to change the color, oh, that's the whole arm. <laughs> so the reason why the whole arm changed is because the whole arm is grouped. And that goes for a lot of our sprites attributes as well actually so the legs are grouped because as you can see when you click on like her legs more than just one shape is highlighted so for example these sprites that I've already edited if I hover over them and I click on something only that one shape is selected so that only that one shape but with this default sprite if I click on something, more than one shape is selected. And that's because uh, these layers for the sprite design are grouped. So if I want to change the wristband color, I can't just change the color in general, the color entirely. I have to ungroup the item first. And now I can change the color of the individual. There we go. <laughs> but now maybe I want her her new wristbands to be shown off. Yeah. Like she has black and white wristbands. Maybe I want her to, to flex those wristbands. So let's have her stick her arms up. And now if I try to move her arms, I only move the part of the wristband I changed. Which is weird. So you only move part of her arm, the wristband still stays. Well that is because the arm is no longer grouped. So when items are grouped together, everything about them changes the same way. And when you ungroup them, they all change individually. So now that they are ungrouped, the arm can move free from the wristband and the thumb. Which is a little weird when you think about it. So let's group them back together. So to do that, just simply click and hold and select multiple aspects of the sprite. In this case, we're going to select the arm and the wristband and the thumb. And we can group them back together. Now when I move them, it's all one piece again. And so let's move it to the back so it's behind all of her layers. Okay, there we go. So what I just did when I grouped the arm back together, what happened was that it was put in the front layer, which means that it's going to overlap everything behind it. Now in some cases you want that, in some cases you don't. And in this case, I didn't really want that. So I moved it to the back layer. But I realized now her arm is behind her hair. So you can move it up a layer to put it right in front of the hair and still behind the shirt to make it look like her arm is still going through the sleeve. Now if I wanted to make another Spurs jersey like I've done here, I can still change the color. Change the color to white. Oh, there it goes again. Uh, more parts of the sprite are still grouped together, so I can undo that. Ungroup. Click on just the jersey. 
And now I can change just that. And I can also add a bit of an outline to mimic stitching of a jersey. Now, now I got a blank jersey. <laughs> but as you can see here, I want to get, I want to put my Spurs logo on the jersey. But if I click on the jersey on the Spurs logo, you can see that it's made of a lot of shapes. It took me a long time to make this logo. Now, I don't want to have to spend all that time again to make the same logo, just to put it here. So what you can do is you can click on a certain item. In this case, I'm going to select my logo. I can copy it. If I switch back to this sprite, I can paste it. And now my logo is back. And it saves you a bunch of time. So, now this is just uh, one way of making a Spurs jersey. And like I said, this is an adventure mode, you can do whatever you want. So maybe you want to put the whole Spurs name, the whole Spurs team name on your jersey. Or maybe you want to have a number so you can use the text editor. Let's put a number here. Let's put number let's put number twelve. Let's change that from purple to black. Boom. Now our characters number 12 for the Spurs. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole bunch of different ways. Maybe you don't even want a jersey. Maybe you just want a regular t-shirt. Like a, like a rainbow shirt. No, you can... Uh, okay. If we want to, we can give her the number. And we could also... Just... Oh. oh yeah. One more thing. You can stretch items. So for the Spurs logo, we'll keep that to the side. But yeah, there's multiple different things you can edit with the the sprite editor. And yeah, maybe you just want like a different colored shirt, so maybe we can just get like a like a streak going on. There. Okay. You know, there's all all sorts of things you can do with the costume editor. Uh, feel free to pause the video and just explore all these scratch functions. See if there's anything you want to do with your sprite. See if there's anything you want to change. Uh, just whatever, you know. Just go at it. Have fun. See your code. Now, uh, if you're done with that, we're gonna move on to our second adventure mode, which is to add a second player. This one does involve adding some code, and it also involves adding a new sprite. So our second sprite is Casey. And as you can see here, we have some new code for Casey. But if we take a look at Max's code, we can see that the code to move Max and the code to move Casey is very similar. Only one thing has been changed, and that is the key pressed. So when A key is pressed, or when D key is pressed, the KC will move left and right. As we also have to recognize a KC when she actually grabs the ball. So if we take a look here, you can see that this code, or this chunk of code, is similar to the chunk of code right here for Max. The only difference is that our block rebound we're not using that block for Casey because we didn't make the block for Casey. So all we did was skip the rebound portion and just use this code here. So delete clone and change rebounds. Broadcast delete clone and change score. So if we run it, we can see that we have both players on the court and they can both move individually. And they both get rebounds. But like I said, there's uh, this is an adventure mode. You can find your own way to do it. Maybe you want to have both of your players right here. Yeah, maybe you want them to be on the same field. Oh, I see. <laughs> I need to change the Y. So maybe like right here. Let's put that to. 
negative 90. Now they're closer together and they can work together or they can go against each other, you know? Grab a buddy or a family member. Just see who can get the most rebounds or see how many of y'all can get together. You know, try to make a game out of it. See if you, how long you can go without letting a ball get past you. And there's all, all different sorts of ways you can do it. Or maybe you don't even want to use the A and D keys. Maybe you want to use the F and G keys or the ZX, QP, whatever you want. You know, it's all up to you. It's, it's your code. It's your adventure. <laughs> now for our last adventure mode that we'll be covering in this lesson, it is the ability to score off of a rebound. So generally in basketball, when you get a rebound, one of two things happens. Uh, you either pass the ball to another player, or you can take the shot and see if you can get the points off. And for this program, for this adventure mode, that's exactly what we're doing. Is we're taking the shot as soon as we get the rebound. So you can see as soon as we get the ball, take the shot, and get a point. Now there's always the possibility if you take too long, that if you start to travel, uh, that the ball will disappear and you won't have the opportunity to get the points you want. So you have to make sure that you have quick reaction, you know, fast time. And shoot the ball as quick as you can. <laughs> it's not that funny though. And with this code, you can see that uh, a few new things have been added on. So if we can compare the basketball here to the original basketball. Yeah. You can see that a new method was added, or a new block was added called shot or shoot. So here what this method is doing is it's taking the X position, which is uh, where max is uh, horizontally on the court. And it's creating a clone there, showing. So, yeah, click it. So it creates a clone at high position, and it heads straight towards the basket, and it gives you a point. When you start as a clone. So now there are two things that can happen when the basketball starts as a clone. So if we have the basketball in our hands, that's when we use the space key to shoot it. And that's what calls on the shoot block. But there's always a chance that you might just be a little too slow when you actually push the shoot button. So if you don't, then what's going to end up happening is that another ball will just spawn in. If you look at Max, if we can compare this code, let's see, I'm going to say it's all this right here. Yeah. So you can see here for Max's code that we added some more blocks. So we have one that's called Animate Rebound Shot. So when this is called, you can see that Max actually looks like she's jumping to take the shot. Or right now it looks like she's trying to block a shot because she doesn't have a ball in her hands. But uh, when the code runs and they call the anime rebound shot, she's jumping to take the shot. <laughs> so what this does is it switches costumes, sort of uh, similar to how our anime rebound, regular one works. The costume switches to max shoot. But if you look at the original costumes, you can see that we don't have a costume called max shoot. Max shoot is actually a costume that we made in order to have it make 
have her look like she's taking a shot. And so to make your own costumes, all you would need to do is right click on uh, any costume you want and you can just duplicate it. And now you have another costume. Let's say uh, you can name it too, make it easier for you to call. So max defend. So you just put her arms oops, up a little higher. And now Max is defending. But, uh, we're not really using this uh, costume for this code. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of it. And if you ever want to get rid of any future costumes that your sprite may have, all you have to do is hit the little trash can button and the costume is gone. Let's see what else we have here. This long green block right here. Because it is nowhere to be found right here. All we have is if. All we have right here is if touching basketball. But that has been changed quite a bit here. So what has changed is when we call the rebound block. And what rebound does is that it gets rid of the ball and it makes the noise that of you actually clasping the ball in your hands. And it also increases your rebound score. So what we did here to change that, or what the changes that we have made to it, was now there are the clone spawns twice now. Because there's a possibility of the clone spawning once when you shoot it, and once if you miss it, or when it uh, just comes back in general. So what we're checking is if you're touching the basketball and your costume number is not number five. So costume number five being the one where you're holding the ball. I mean, not the one where you're holding the ball. The one where you're shooting. It's max shoot. So if your costume is not costume number five and you're not shooting the ball, then the ball is going to rebound. So if you're not shooting the ball, that means you're catching the ball. All right. And there's multiple different ways to do this, uh, to have your character shoot the ball off a of rebound. This is just the way that we're doing it here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, not every code has to be the same. Uh, there's multiple different ways to do this. Maybe you want to do it. Maybe you want to make it look less complicated. Because I know looking at this, it's giving me a little bit of a headache. Because it is quite a bit of code. So there's ways around that. You can make it shorter, make it more simpler. Maybe you want to make it really complicated. You know? uh, maybe you want to. Oh, maybe you want to add a second player that can block a person trying to make a rebound shot. You know, there's <laughs> that'd be pretty cool actually. You know, there's there's different things you can do. You know, it's adventure mode. You go on and go off and create your own code. You know? uh, there's only so much that we can tell you directly or show you directly. You know, some some things as a coder you just have to find out on your own. And that's the whole point of adventure mode is for you to just go off and have fun. But uh, with that. This was our last adventure mode for this activity. Uh, we're done. Uh, we hope you enjoyed staying with us and participating in these activities for the past few weeks. Uh, if you create your own code off these adventure modes, or if you make something completely different, feel free to share it with the hashtag SpursGiveCode. Spurs and uh, no, we hope you enjoy. Thank you.